Dang it. They released an episode on Christmas that doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. Oh, well, at least it's good. I'm Mediocrity4, and this is my review of Ruby Volume 4, Episode 7, Punish. If you haven't seen the episode yet, please do before watching this review. As both a teacher and a critic, I should preface that it's way more interesting and more fun to point out the flaws in a piece than just praise what's good. A math test with all the right answers only takes a few seconds to grade, but a math test with the wrong answers is an endeavor to rework and analyze. I bring this up because the latest episode of Ruby is like a math test with all the right answers. It's good, but it's so unexceptional with what's good that its lack of flaws inadvertently make it a little boring to talk about. This is, in every way, a follow-up to the last episode. Cut out the Oscar bits, and these last two episodes could have flowed together as one. We get more Weiss, and we get the continuation of the Tyrion fight. But let's start with Oscar, since the episode does. As a standalone episode, this works I do worry that it'll make binging this volume a little bit of a mess. Like, you go from Ranger to Weiss, back to Ranger, then take a detour with Oscar that goes nowhere, and back to Weiss, then Ranger again. The Oscar bit? I think I'm actually bored of this subplot. Oscar just isn't all that interesting. Sure, Ozpin is in his head and probably going to take him over at some point, but this is the third time we've seen this kid and he's done nothing. Maybe this is good insight on Ospin as well, but the way this is being paced, they really don't have time to go the whole reluctant hero thing. Not unless they end it pretty soon or have a tie into what Ranger are doing, as both are in the Mistral region. The Y segment is well and good. This is where the titular punishment comes in. Now, I've dumped on World of Remnant in the past and it ain't ending anytime soon. But I have to commend the latest one and how it affected this episode. We find out just what Weiss thinks of Jacques. We find out within the series that Weiss' reasoning stems from him marrying into the Shni name instead of being a proper Shni. Then he slaps her. Now knowing how this fandom thinks, should that World of Remnant not exist, a good number of fans would latch onto the familial revelation, but knowing that bit of knowledge going in puts the emphasis on where it should be. He slapped her. He did everything he could to break her. He's locking her away, took the company from her. He's trying to subjugate her like he does everyone else. And to make matters worse, Whitley finally does something to earn all the hate he's already gotten and sides with the father. But this won't break Weiss. Instead of just crying, she moves some stuff around, picks up her blade, and keeps practicing. Though I don't know what that's going to accomplish, but that's not the point. On a side note, I'm willing to bet Winter went through this as well. She disobeyed Jacques by joining the military and her inheritance was stripped from her. The main difference being, there was no crisis that forced her back home for Jacques to lock her away. Plus, Winter is a bit more hard-nosed than Weiss and would have fought back. Another worry more than a complaint is how long it would be between the Tyrion segments. Last episode ending on a cliffhanger and half the next episode passes before the cliffhanger is addressed, only for it to end on yet another cliffhanger, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The battle is good, maybe some of the editing could have been cleaned up, maybe there were too many rapidly edited close-ups that caused some disorientation, maybe that was the point. It hits hard, it moves fast, and there are some top quality moments in it. I'm glad that the members of Team Ranger at least tried to help Crow before he told them to stay back. And even then, true to form, Ruby still pitches in. Here's a nitpick. Why are the visual indicators for damage and aura different this volume? Come on, aura is already this vague thing that is better left unexplained at this point. The least you could do is be consistent with the way it's visually represented. Now for a segment I like to call, Things I find obvious that the average viewer thinks are some big mystery. Ruby says it's her fight too. Crow says that that's not it. As in, that's not why he told her to stand back. Is it because that's how Summer died? Is it because Ruby is secretly Crow's kid? No, it's because Crow knows this is her fight, but Tyrion is out of her league. For now. If they are going in another direction with this fight, it could have been good for Jean to jump in and defend Ruby from the falling debris, but that's not where they are going with it and now Crow is wounded. Ruby cut Tyrion's tail off, and Crow has a lot of explaining to do. Two things on that one. One, I swear, if when they do that scene, he's just standing around, talking, I'm going to rant. Two, 
There is no reason for him to bring up the Maidens. The Maidens don't matter that much. They were an afterthought. The Silver Eye nonsense is what the show was actually building towards. On that note, I just realized that introducing the Maidens when they did open people's minds to more powers like the Silver Eyed Warriors assuming they didn't upscale that power to match the Maidens. And that's all I have to say about that. There wasn't anything wrong or anything particularly exceptional, just an entertaining episode bridging between plot points at a decent pace. I'm Mediocrity4, thanks for watching.